Welcome to the U Poker Academy Poker Lecture Series designed to make you a better poker player. This is Lesson 5, Bluffs. So bluffing is an essential part of poker, but it's one that a lot of people don't understand on a deep level. Now we define bluffs into two categories. The first is a semi-bluff and the second is a true bluff. Now semi-bluffs are bets that you make when you don't have the best hand but the next card could make you the best hand. So this would be an example like a, a flush draw would be a semi bluff because you don't have a hand yet but you've got a really good shot at catching the flush and so you're gonna bet there. The other kind is the pure bluff which means you have no chance of winning the hand and you expect that the other player will fold a certain percentage of the time and so you you are making a bet in order to make them fold. So there are three ways to win poker hands. The first is to um, is to win the hand at showdown. The second is to get it all in um, before showdown and to win the hand by showdown and the third is to win the hand by stealing the pot. Bluffing uh, accounts for the second two variations of winning the pot. So it's essentially more important than having good hands. Because if you put in a strong semi bluff and get it all in, not only can you win the pot by having your opponent fold there on the spot, but you can also catch your hand and win by showdown. So those are the essential roles that bluffing plays. Let's break down each type of bluff in a little bit more um, detail. The semi bluff gets its value from the combined equity of your opponent's folding and you making the best hand. However, a bluff gets all of its equity from the percentage of times your opponent folds. So what does this mean? This means that you have to be bluffing into an opponent that will fold often enough to make your bet profitable. So, if the pot is $100 and I bet $50, then I need to win that pot at least 33% of the time because I'm putting in 50 and the pot will be 150 when I take it back so if I'm winning it more than 33% of the time then I can bet there is a bluff that is if my opponent will fold more than 33% of the time however with the semi bluff the equity that you have for winning the pot through your draw is added to that so if I expect my opponent to fold 20% of the time but I also have a 20% chance to win the pot. Then I need to bet, th then if I'm betting 40% of the pot or less, actually no, um, let me start that over. If I'm betting $50 into a $100 pot, so I would need to win 33% with a pure bluff, but I actually have some draw odds. Say my draw equity is equal to 20%, then I actually only need my opponent to fold um, about 15% of the time because 50% of the time he folds 20% of the time he calls and I win and the other 60% of the time or so he calls and I lose however because we are betting less than the size of the pot we are not risking so much to convince him to fold so that's essentially how bluffing works and this is the perfect spot to talk about a semi bluff I have the fives and I have the flush draw as outs. That gives me 9 outs for the flush draw plus 3 outs for the remaining 5s for 12 outs. So I'm essentially going to win this 48% of the time. I need my opponents to fold very, very rarely to make this a profitable bet for full pot. In fact, I could have bet, over bet the pot. I could have bet $10 there and still been profitable because I'm going to win the pot so often. In this case, I wanted to bet a little bit smaller, help build the pot for when I do make my flush. But in some cases, you'll want to just shut the action down. And in those cases, it's worth overbetting. So what else do we need to know about bluffing? Well, I always put my opponents on a 10% bluff percentage any time that they bet into me. I assume they're bluffing at least 10% of the time. And likewise, whenever I bluff I assume my opponents will fold a minimum of 10% of the time and this is simply because you can't ever be certain what your opponents have 
um, to say I'm 100% confident this is what he has is generally overestimating your own uh, ability to read hands. And so 10% is a, a reasonable range to help you see the errors of that kind of mentality. And while they may fold 20 or 30% of the time, if you've got a profitable bet, if they fold 10% of the time, then you're going to want to make that bet. Um, this really comes into effect in semi-bluffs. Um, say I've got a flush draw, and that gives me 36% to win the pot, and I bet pot, I need to win the pot 50% um, of the time. Then with 36%, plus 10%, I'm at 46%, I need 50%. So I'm actually very close to being able to make that bet. And if we assume they are folding 14% of the time, which is not unlikely, then we have a profitable bet. So that's why semi-bluffing with flush draws is generally a profitable strategy. Now, as your equity decreases in a semi-bluff, say I have a straight draw with only 8 outs, or I have two over cards for only 6 outs, obviously the chance that they fold needs to increase or I need to bet less without convincing them to fold less often, if that makes sense. So, say we have 100 chips in the pot, and I have the option to bet anywhere from 20 chips to 200 chips. That's my right in the limit. Um, I know that I need to, uh, I've got my 6 out over card bet, so I'm going to be winning this about 24% of the time. So, if I was to bet half pot, I would only need them to fold 7% of the time, so that would be profitable. If I'm betting full pot, I would need them to fold 50% of the time, which is another 26% on top of my 24% equity. So that might also be profitable. Um, the question is, does betting more induce them to fold more hands? And generally the answer is yes. But the question is, how big is that disparity? If I'm betting half pot, and I know I have a read on my opponent where I say he's generally going to call half pot bets, but he often folds to full pot bets, then I might actually make more money by betting full pot rather than by betting half pot. And that's going to be a calculation that you're going to have to do based on the percentage of hands that he's going to fold. And we've got another lesson up talking about ranges where we talk about how to calculate a range, but you're basically going to take his range and divide it by the percent of his range which he folds to get a percentage of the time in which he folds. And that's essentially bluffing. Um, let's debunk a couple of myths. Um, poker is not all about big bets and bluffing. There are a lot of TV programs out there that show all the big bluffs that go down at a poker table, but bluffing is actually very rare. In fact, in the uh, eight minutes you've been watching this video, I believe I've only bluffed one time, and that was with a very, very strong semi-bluff. I have not made any pure bluffs, and I very rarely do without good reads. And a lot of players make bluffs a central part of their game, and they end up going broke because eventually people will start calling you. So the secret to making your bluffs profitable is to make them semi-bluffs and make those more often, but to make your pure bluffs very, very rare. The only times when a pure bluff um, enters into my consideration is say on the river when I have no way to win the pot and I know this but I believe that a scare card has come on the turn or river or for whatever reason I believe my opponent is going to fold a certain percentage of his hands in those cases I will make a pure bluff <coughs> the other type of bluff that I make often that is not really a semi bluff or a pure bluff is a continuation bet bluff a continuation bet happens when you've raised before the flop and then you bet on the flop. If you've got a hand, then you're just betting. But if you have no hand, then you're continuation bet bluffing. And this is a bluff that I make very, very often because you have raised pre-flop. It does give them that chance to see the flop and then fold. And only about 35% of hands actually make a pair or better on the flop. So about 65% of the time, give or take, your opponent will fold to your flop bet. And this allows you to make a, a generous profit because we've said with a half pot bet they only need to fold 33% of the time. They're actually folding 65% of the time. That's a tidy sum that you're making there. Now some players will often call flop bets to see a turn. You have to be wary of these players because they can make your bluffs unprofitable. And what can really hurt your bluff percentage is having to bluff into two players. And this really applies to C-bet bluffs because generally when you're talking about 
um, continuation bets, you may have more than one person who has called you before the flop. Now, if I've got to, if I'm betting half pot, I need to win 33% of the time. But I've got two players who both fold 60% of the time. Then 60% of the time, one person folds. And then only 60% of that 60%, the second player folds. And that's just a rough estimate, but it's about three-fifths of 60%, or 35% um, or so. So I need to have them fold 33, I have them fold 35%. That's pretty break-even as far as I'm concerned. So when you're betting into two or more players, a continuation bet can be unprofitable. Now if they're folding 80% of their hands in the flop, for example, if they won't play if they don't have top pair or better, then a continuation bet becomes profitable again. But if you've got three players in the mix, let's look at that math one more time with three players. We have three players who are folding 75% of their hands. Um, so I need them to fold altogether 33%. The first player will fold 75%. The second player will fold 75% of that 75. So um, roughly 60% of the time. And the third player will fold 75% of that 60%, so roughly 40 or so 45% of the time. So you see there, even with stricter C bet folding ranges, 75%, it becomes very break even with three players. And not very many players fold more than 75% of the time to the C bet. That is very, very conservative. So when you get a couple of players who only fold 60% of the time in there, throw them in the mix, then it becomes unprofitable to bet into three or more players. So this will be a hand when I'm sure we'll see a C-bet opportunity, and it might even be a semi-bluff. So we're going to take a look at how it plays out. We have raised eight from the button with ace-jack suited, and we were called in two places. The pot is 26, and we do flop top two pairs, so this will not be a discussion of bluffs but feel free to watch the hand play out. So thank you for joining us at UPoker Academy. Please check us out on riskoriented.com. For more poker strategy to deliver directly to your YouTube account, please like us and subscribe to us. And for more poker strategy right now, continue to our next poker lecture by clicking here.